Welcome to our educational video. This video has been developed by MedNav. MedNav is an organization that helps to promote women's and children's health worldwide through education and innovation. If you'd like to know more about our work or indeed support us, please visit this website link. During this session, you'll be reminded the normal anatomy of the perineum. You'll be taught how to perform and repair an episiotomy and repair of second, third and fourth degree tears. For effective perineal repair, there are some essential prerequisites. You'll need to be able to position the patient adequately. She will need to have understood and consented to the procedure and you'll need adequate analgesia. It's important to repair the perineum as soon as possible after delivery to decrease the chance of hemorrhage or wound infection. You'll need an effective light source, a suture pack, which could contain a needle holder, some forceps, and some scissors. You'll need some gloves. The equipment to give local anaesthetic if required. You'll need swabs or a tampon, and you may require some small clips like Spencer Wells. For third and fourth degree repairs, you'll definitely need some small clips and you'll need four Alice forceps. And some use retractors like a Gelfi or St. Mark's. You'll need some sutures. A rapidly absorbing 2-0 suture, such as a Velasorb Fast or a Bicral Rapide, will be used to repair the vaginal skin the perineal muscles and the perineal skin. This has been shown to be preferable as it reduces wound dehiscence, pain and the need for the suture to be removed up to three months post delivery. Fine sutures such as 3O Vicral are used for the anal mucosa. These are preferred over cat gut for their tensile strength, non-allergic properties and lower infection rates. To repair the external and internal anal sphincter you will require a monofilament fine, slowly absorbable suture, such as a 3O PDS. These absorbable sutures have been shown to be preferable to non-absorbable sutures as they reduce the risk of perineal abscess formation and pain that means the suture has to be removed following delivery. We'll now go on and review the anatomy of the perineum. The muscles associated with perineal trauma are the bulbal spongiosis, which can be thought of as a vaginal sphincter muscle, the transverse perineal muscles, and the external anal sphincter. These three muscles come together to form a central tendon, which is called the perineal body. The normal perineal body should measure 2.5 centimeters from the middle of the anal opening to the posterior fourchette. Just by the posterior fourchette, are the hymenal remnants. These are useful landmarks for when you perform your perineal repair. The anal sphincter complex is made up of the anal epithelium, the internal anal sphincter, this is a paler, smooth muscle, and the external anal sphincter, which is a striated muscle and redder to the naked eye. Perineal protection at crowning and a warm compress on the perineum during the second stage of delivery has been shown to reduce the risk of anal sphincter injury. All women who have a vaginal delivery need to have a rectal examination to assess for any anal sphincter trauma. This should be done with an index finger and a thumb in a pill rolling technique to ensure the anal sphincter has ad been adequately examined for any damage. First degree tears involve injury to the perineal skin only. Second degree tears involve injury to the perineum involving the perineal muscles, but not involving the anal sphincter. With third degree tears, the injury to the perineum involves the anal sphincter complex. This is subdivided into 3A, where less than 50% of the external anal sphincter is torn. A 3B tear is when more than 50% of the external anal sphincter is torn. And 3C, 
where both internal and external anal sphincters are torn. Fourth degree tears involve injury to the perineum involving the anal sphincter complex and the anal epithelium. Episiotomy is a medically indicated use of an incision to expedite delivery. This is performed with adequate analgesia at the height of a contraction when the fetal head is crowning. Insertion of the local anaesthetic requires you to visualise the line of the episiotomy. Insert two fingers into the vagina to protect the fetal head. This is often quite difficult as the head is crowning. Using your syringe of local anaesthetic, insert the needle at the posterior fourchette up to four to five centimetres. Then pull back on the plunger to ensure you get no blood flash back and you haven't cannulated a vessel. As you withdraw your needle, insert the local anaesthetic. Before fully withdrawing the needle, either side of the initial infiltration, insert the rest of your anaesthetic, as this will make your anaesthetic more effective. Where episiotomy is indicated, for example, it could be with instrumental deliveries, the mediolateral technique is recommended. This is at an angle of 60 degrees away from the midline. The anal sphincter complex expands up to two and a half times in delivery. Angles of less than 60 degrees may well cut through the anal sphincter complex. The aim of perineal repair is to restore the normal anatomy and achieve hemostasis. All dead space must be closed to reduce the chance of hematoma formation. You must take care not to use any undue tension as this can result in chronic pain. You will need to perform a PV and a PR to ensure there have been no buttonhole tears and to identify the extent of the injury. You should change gloves between examinations. First degree tears may heal spontaneously but will need to be sutured if they are bleeding. For second degree tears, clean the area in order for you to clearly identify the perineal anatomy and infiltrate with local anaesthetic. Identify the apex of the tear. This can be helped by inserting a swab or a tampon into the vagina to remove the excess blood. It is important that you remove this at the end of the procedure. Place and secure the first suture five millimeters above the apex to secure any vessels that may have contracted above the tear. Repair the posterior vaginal wall with a loose, continuous, non-locking suture from the apex to the foreshed or hymenal remnants. Insert the needle back through the skin at the fourchette and then back through the vaginal mucosa to exit in the centre of the perineal muscle tear. Approximate the perineal muscles, the bulbal spongiosus and the transverse perineal muscles using a continuous non-locking suture. Depending on how deep the tear is, two layers of sutures may be required. By this point, hemostasis should have been achieved. Bring the suture out at the apex of the skin and close the skin using subcuticular sutures. Use a loop or Aberdeen knot at the posterior foreshet to finish the procedure. 
subcuticular sutures associated with less pain than sutures that penetrate the skin. Remember not to use any undue tension as this can result in chronic pain. Finish off the procedure by counting your swabs and equipment and carrying out a vaginal and rectal exam to ensure adequacy of the repair and that no suture is palpable in the rectum. Repair of third and fourth degree tears should be carried out in theater with good analgesia and operating light and assistant and aseptic conditions. For fourth degree tears, identify the apex of the rectal mucosa and place a suture over this. Continue along the rectal mucosa using closely spaced half a centimeter interrupted or continuous sutures until you reach the anal verge. Leave any knots tied, tied in the rectum. At this point, we now move on to repair the third degree tear. The internal anal sphincter is identified as a glistening white fibrous structure between the rectal mucosa and the external anal sphincter. The ends of the sphincter may retract and so the placement of Alice forceps may help facilitate the repair. Take a full thickness bite of the internal anal sphincter from one side and carry on to take a full thickness bite of the other side. Now reverse your needle, taking a full thickness bite from the same side and through to the side you started from. Tie off this stitch. This end-to-end -end mattress suture technique is used along the length of the internal anal sphincter. The external anal sphincter can be identified as a thick, fleshy red structure. Once identified, place Alice forceps to either edge. The end-to-end -end technique involves the same technique as with the internal anal sphincter and should be used for all partial thickness tears, that is those classified as 3A and some 3B tears. The overlapping technique may require dissection of the external anal sphincter to the pararectal fat, which is seen as a yellow adipose tissue. This allows for adequate mobilization of the sphincter. Repair the sphincter in a double-breasted fashion. When you've placed your stitches, secure the stitches with a small clip. When you've placed both stitches, tie these stitches 
Similar outcomes have been seen for the repair of the external anal sphincter with both end-to-end -end stitch or the overlap double-breasted stitch technique. Bury the surgical knots beneath the superficial muscles in order to prevent knot migration and pain. At the end of all perineal trauma repairs, a PR and PV must be performed to check for hemostasis and adequacy of the repair. For third and fourth degree tears, you will need to give a course of prophylactic antibiotics to reduce the risk of infection. She will need stool softeners for a week to reduce the risk of wound dehiscence. Women should be given advice on pelvic floor exercises and they should be followed up if available. With a good perineal repair, around 80% of women will be asymptomatic at 12 months.